Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Tacoma Cyclist. I am the Tacoma Cyclist. Boogeyman's not with me today. Uh, today's a fun day because I got new toys. So if you have watched this blog or vlog very much, you'll know that just the other day I was riding on my beloved Dura Ace pedals and I was hearing just the most horrible sound coming from my bike and I thought my bike was broken. And it turns out that the axle on this right pedal was shredded. The bearings in here, they feel like there's gravel in there. And it was just making these horrible crunching and popping sounds to the point where I thought my bottom bracket was, bracket was toast or my, or even like literally carbon was broken. So I decided to get some new pedals, but not only did I get new pedals, I decided to go ahead and get some power pedals. And here we are. So let's do a quick unboxing. Uh, in addition to doing an unboxing, I'm going to also set these pedals up and I'm going to install the cleats. I'm going to go through that entire process. This will not be a review yet because, well, I just haven't put any time on them, so there's no time for a review. I will have a review though, so check back in maybe a month because I want to give them a few hundred miles before I uh, actually give you a review. Otherwise, I'm just not really reviewing them. I'm just riding them. Okay, so. Uh, the pedals that I got are the Asiomo Duo from Flavero, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing their name correctly, but uh, you can see that they're labeled appropriately, and this is a nice way that they don't have to waste packaging by creating multiple different packages. They just label which one's in the box. <clears throat> All right. I will admit I started filming this, so I've already opened this box, uh, but the camera shut off in the middle, so... Shame on me for not charging pro appropriately. Uh, but here we go. Uh, now I don't need my awesome knife because everything's already open. Here are the pedals. And um, one of the things that I actually really like about this is on the box, it actually specifies what the stack height is and what the Q factor is. Because invariably, the Q factor on these is going to be different than my existing pedals. And the Q factor essentially is the platform you width, how far away from the actual axle your pedal is. Now the good news on this is honestly, that Q factor between the two of them is pretty similar. I'm actually gonna pull up the stats. I'll put a little card up here and shows you the stats of, of the Q factor and the stack height for these. And this is really important because if your stack height is different, then your saddle may need to be raised or lowered. And if you raise or lower your saddle, then you're gonna to need to adjust your fore after your saddle. So changing your pedals can in fact uh, have a significant impact on your bike fit. And you don't just want to change that without adjusting everything else. So I'm gonna do some research to make sure the stack height is the same and the Q factor is similar enough. I don't mind varying the Q factor by a millimeter or two. It's not the end of the world, but stack height, my saddle positioning up and down, it's dialed to the millimeter. So if that changes, I need to change my stack. I need to change my saddle height. Okay, so these are held in with some pretty aggressive zip ties. So have a nice pair of scissors or wire cutters around because your regular scissors, you're just gonna wind up cussing a lot. Now, before I open up the rest of the box, an important question that everyone's gonna ask, at least I hope you do, is how about the weight? Okay, these are dual sided, which means that there's a power meter pod on both pedals, which means ideally these should be relatively identical in weight. 151.5 grams. And apparently there's a magnet in there and that's how the power, uh, the power works. Okay. So again, 151.4 versus the Dura Ace, which is very light. It's 116.9. So 30 ish grams, give or take. 151.8. So between the two units, there's 0.4 grams difference. This is 117.2. So interestingly, both of them are 0.4 grams, grams heavier for your right pedal. Kind of weird. In any case, yeah, these are a little heavier, uh, but not significantly so. Now I am rocking two, two power meters on my bike and I'm not going to take the Quark off my bike. Um, why am I doing two power meters? Well, it's not like I want to measure both of them. Um, I will be using the Quark to compare these pedals for my upcoming review. But the reason that I got power-based pedals is because 
uh, ultimately, if I decide to change bikes, these can come with it, right? The, the Quark, as much as I love the Quark, and it is a great power meter, very consistent uh, from day to day, very consistent, very accurate with, with, with regards to its measurements, one of the best in the world. The reason I decided to go with pedal-based is because, you know, I have a TT bike and I have a power meter on that bike, which is a Pioneer left arm crank meter, uh, power meter. I have a trainer. It puts out a specific, I mean, it, it has a power signature. I have the Quark. It has a power signature. So I've got all these different power meters and they've all got their slightly different signatures. And what I'd like to have is consistency from unit to unit to unit. So if I put these on my road bike and I train with them on Zwift or whatever else, uh, and I use them on the road, and then I can switch them over to my TT bike as well, then my power reading should be consistent from unit to unit to unit. Uh, and that's really important because, you know, especially if I'm dialing in my power meter for a long TT effort, if my Pioneer is reading 10 watts lower, I may accidentally try to put out too much power um, based on what I know to be my power results uh, and cook myself too soon in a TT, which you don't want. So having that consistency across the board is great. Plus, what happens if I move to a bike that has a different bottom bracket standard? Now I don't have to worry about it. I've got uh, a power meter that I can just take from the old bike and put it on the new bike, no problem. I have heard um, that the axles on these are very serviceable. Uh, I hope to not have to test that anytime soon, but it's nice to know that should I need to, I can in fact uh, service these axles because I'd like for them to last more than the three years that these last especially considering they're so pricey. Now that brings the other point down is, you know, if I'm gonna spend 300 plus dollars on something like this, why not spend just a little bit more? Okay, twice as much, about 700 to get these. You know, and again, I've got a power meter that's universal. So uh, I think it's a win-win. I also think it's a pretty affordable power meter. And when you compare it to things like the Garmin um, Vector dual-sided or the uh, uh, PowerTap P1s, they're gonna be, uh, a lot more price conscious. Okay, uh, so what do we have in the box? This is just holding it in place. Universal adapters for uh, going to different countries. This actually can come in handy just because, um, you know, if you travel with your bike to a foreign country and you want your power meter to work, it's probably not a bad idea to, to have those adapters. These are what charge um, these power meters. These power meters don't have removable batteries. You essentially connect this, and this is a six foot long, two meter, so a little over six feet, um, power cable that you plug into USB. So um, it's not quite as convenient as the Quark because I can just, I can carry around a CR2032 battery in my kit and charge my power meter should the power meter die. But, um, you know, just check your charge every once in a while. If it's sitting on the on the trainer at home, just throw it on the charger. Uh, of course, it comes with all the quick start manuals and stuff and a set of cleats. These are supposedly very similar to uh, Look Keo cleats and some people have reported great success in using Look Keo cleats. Other people have reported that you just can't use them. So uh, I'll start with these, but I may get a set of Keos and try them as well, just to let you know. Um, my current cleats, the Shimano cleats that go with this, are the two degree float cleats, so the blue cleats. These have a much bigger float, and I'll see if that's good or bad for my legs. Um, but if I go with the Kios, then I'll probably uh, switch to the, the tighter float. In any case, these are available, you know, from a variety of sources, not the least of which is Amazon. So you can get Xpedo as the brand, um, relatively affordably. And you've got some spacers, some washers. Now, the purpose of these washers is real simple. There's four in here. You can do one or two on, on either, uh, either side of the pedal. And this is if you have a carbon crank arm and you don't uh, have enough clearance, you don't want the pedal pod to be striking the crank arm. That'll destroy everything. So putting a little washer on can help. This also alters the Q factor a little bit. Uh, I think each one of these is a one millimeter washer. So you're altering the Q factor by one millimeter. You're spreading your legs further out. That may not necessarily be a bad thing. I've seen a lot of people who could benefit from having a slightly wider stance. All right, and then, you know, uh, a pretty standard double USB charger. This is specifically so that you can plug this into the wall and plug your 
petals in. So uh, next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and check the Q factor to see how that is. I'm gonna check the stack height and see how that is. And if they're not too far off within a millimeter, then I'll swap over the parts today. Now I, I have a hard workout tonight. I don't wanna go farting around with my setup uh, in advance of a very hard workout and then find myself in pain because my setup is off. So if those things aren't close enough with intolerance, then I'm not gonna do it today. I'll wait till tomorrow. Now, by the time this video is published, they'll already have been on my bike. So um, yeah, they'll, they'll be there. Uh, but I'm gonna show you how it is that I also transfer the cleats because cleat setup is incredibly important. Uh, I've been doing a lot of education towards bike fit, becoming certified for bike fit, and I can tell you that one of the most important aspects of any bike fit is proper cleat fitting. And I'm gonna take a lot of effort to make sure that these cleats replicate the exact positioning that I had on my previous cleats, and I'll show you that as well. <clears throat> okay, a word on the Q factor and stack height. I just consulted uh, Shimano's website and I have the information here. So Shimano makes the Dura-Ace pedals in a standard axle length and an axle length that is four millimeters longer. Now, what's the purpose of widening your stance? If you have wider hips and you set yourself on a road bike and the stance is too narrow, it can actually draw your knees in the wrong direction. Uh, and in fact, if you think about the very, just the basic mechanics of that, you're creating kind of a triangle, uh, which means that your knees are gonna hit your top two potentially. By moving that stack height out, you potentially bring your knees a little bit further out, uh, straightening that stance. And you really do want your, the, your knees to track very vertically. As part of my bike fitting setup, I've got some really cool lasers that track leg movement, and you can see when somebody's Q factor is too narrow because this action occurs and it throws the knees off like crazy. So. Uh, looking at their website, the Q factor on this pedal is 52 millimeters, and that's essentially measuring the point where it locks into the crank arm to the dead center of the pedal, 52 millimeters. On their longer one, it's four millimeters longer, it's 56 millimeters. Well, interestingly, this is 54 millimeters. So this pedal right here has a 54 millimeter uh, Q factor. And if I were to put these two millimeters of spacers on, then I could get all the way up to a 56 millimeter. So in theory, the Q factor on this can be as long as the wider pedals on the uh, Shimano's. Is that a bad thing? No, it's not. And in fact, Q factor can very easily be adjusted with cleat positioning uh, on a side to side level if there's enough latitude within the cleats. Uh, I'm not overly concerned about the Q factor setting it up in advance of a tough workout. What I am concerned with is the stack height. Now the stack on these pedals on the Favero is 10.5 millimeters. The stack on these is a impressively low 13 millimeters. But here's the thing, 13 millimeter stack height versus 10 millimeter stack height, which is ridiculously low, means I'm gonna to have to adjust my saddle position by up to three millimeters. If I bring my saddle down by three millimeters to account for that lower stack height, I'm also gonna probably need to move the saddle in one direction forward or aft. Typically, if you're bringing the saddle down, bringing it back to account for that uh, forward movement that, that takes place as you move it down is appropriate. So moving it back by about a centimeter, by about a millimeter, not a centimeter, um, is gonna position it properly. Uh, in general, I find that people have their saddles too far up anyway, and lowering mine three more millimeters, totally fine with. I'm not fine, however, doing that the day of a workout that's gonna be particularly intense. So I'm going to break all of my rules because I'm a very impatient person. I paid for overnight shipping on these and I'm not gonna put them on until tomorrow because I think it would be stupid and foolish of me to um, put them on and then in three hours go do an incredibly hard workout. I think that would be very foolish. So uh, bear with me. Um, from your perspective, I'm just going to go ahead and put these on in the next 30 seconds. But from my perspective, I've got to wait 24 hours, which is just going to tear me up. But uh, what I will do in the next portion of this video is I will show you cleat setup and uh, installing these cleats or installing these pedals onto the bike, how you do that. Okay, so I've done something that is probably one of the more challenging things that I've ever done 
in my entire life. And that is to say that I got a new piece of cycling gear in, didn't even notice it was on my porch for an entire day, and then waited an entire day to actually do the install because I didn't want to do it right before a very hard workout, which was probably a smart idea. So here I am. Today is the day after I noticed the package, which is the day after I got the package. So uncharacteristic for me. I literally paid for overnight shipping and didn't even know the package was on my porch. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm gonna show you, I already unboxed it. I'm gonna show you how to swap the cleats out. Now, if you are swapping out the same kind of cleat for the same kind of cleat, then this step is actually easy, but it's probably different than you think it is because a lot of people will you know, take a Sharpie and they'll trace around the cleat. That's actually not the best way to do this. Uh, I've put this towel down because frankly, this is my kitchen table. I don't really want to put a nasty shoe on my table. Plus this gives us some extra contrast. Anyway, people trace around. That's not always the best approach. Uh, in, in the process of learning to be a fitter, one of the things you learn is the, prop, the proper way to mark cleat locations. Now, you know, that is to say you, you know, make your marks uh, kind of at a diagonal through here. Uh, and make your hash marks that way. But again, I'm swapping a different kind of cleat out than what's already in place. I'm probably gonna have to do a little bit of a bike fit on myself after I'm said and done, but like I said, I've got some pretty cool lasers that'll measure all of that kind of stuff and help me understand where my foot needs to be. Uh, given that there's gonna be some shift in any direction, I probably need to do that. What I'm gonna do here though, is I really need to focus on my left to right placement and my angle of placement. So instead of focusing on four aft, in almost every single case, uh, I tend to run my cleats pretty much as far back as I possibly can. Uh, I have longer toes and a, uh, my mid uh, foot section, the ball of my foot and the uh, far right knuckle of my, or the far outside knuckle of my toes, it, it's pretty far back. So I tend to run my cleats pretty far back. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna focus on the center section of the actual cleat. So I'm gonna make marks in the dead center of the cleat and then I'm gonna carry that mark through onto the shoe. And I need that mark to be visible. Maybe hard to tell on camera, but that mark is visible now. And that is the center line of the fore aft of the shoe. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the front. I'm gonna carry that line through. And I wanna be able to see that that line just goes straight through there. Now, most cleats will have a center marking on them. Uh, in this particular case, these don't really. So I'm gonna make a similar mark here. I'm just gonna go straight down the center of the shoe and, or straight down the center of the cleat with my marker. If you really wanna get nerdy with it, you can measure this out. I'm not gonna measure it out. Um, but what this will do for me is this will give me a great uh, center starting point. And again, I'm just going to the far aft of the cleat position uh, to mount this cleat. <clears throat> now, again, the Q factor on these cleats is a little different than the Q factor, or on the, well, not on the cleats, but on the pedals, is a little different than the Q factor on my existing pedals uh, in as much as it could be up to two millimeters different. That's significant. Um, the only positive thing I see from that is that I'd been considering putting some spacers in there anyway, because my knee does track a little to the inside while riding. This is a great opportunity to clean off some of that gunk and precisely why I have a towel. All right, so I've got my center markings here. I need to line those up with the existing center markings. Doesn't have to be perfect yet, not until I start tightening these down. Uh, I will say the bolts on this, the, the screws and everything for these cleats, they look to be of sufficiently high quality. Uh, I've gotten some, especially on like the cheaper Shimano cleats, where they're just, eh. Uh, these actually look pretty solid. It's a nice, looks like a nickel plating on it. So nice and hard, which means you shouldn't be able to easily strip the threads. Now, one thing I'm skipping here, uh, and I will come back and do this once I've got everything lined up, because I'm gonna have to make some adjustments anyway. Uh, I almost always put a light grease on the threads. Nothing worse than getting your bolts uh, into your shoes and uh, then them seizing up on you. So just a touch of, uh, just a little tiny bit of grease on there will keep them from seizing up and it'll keep the moisture from getting in there and uh, rusting out your, 
your threads. But just to get uh, just to get this started, I'm going to show you the actual mounting of the cleat. It's a three bolt system, so obviously this will only work on three bolt shoes. And I want to get these mostly tight. I don't want to get them 100% tight because I, I can't make any adjustments after that point. So I use the long end of the Allen key. Yeah, and these, these are going to want some grease. I mean, they're a little bit, you can tell that they're dry. All right, so I'm just going to line up. I feel like these cleats are going to come further back than my existing cleats. And I want to make sure that, as a matter of fact, I know they are. I can, I can physically see that they're coming further back than my existing cleats did. I just want to line that up as best as I can. Now, in this case, what I'm noticing is that the I can't get this quite as far outboard as uh, my existing cleats were, which means that the cleat will move towards the inside of the shoe. And if the cleat is moving towards the inside of the shoe, then the foot is moving out. And this is something else I want to be very conscientious of because the Q factor is already pushing my feet potentially two more millimeters out this way, or maybe even as much as four, depending upon which uh, spacers I have to put in there. Uh, and I'm probably moving just by visual, I'm probably moving about a half a millimeter in that direction again. Uh, I'm definitely going to want to spend some time with some bike fit uh, after I get these cleats on, which definitely makes me happy that I did not uh, put these on prior to doing an incredibly hard workout last night. So uh, let me put these on. I'll go get the grease and put it on here, and then I will uh, mount the pedals to the bike. Hang tight. Okay. Next thing I got to do is mount the pedals themselves. Now, please excuse the relatively nasty look of my bike. I did ride it outside in some pretty gross weather. I'm going to ride it outside again in some gross weather, and I just haven't washed it yet. So um, I'm kind of ashamed at the look of my bike at the moment, but it is what it is. Now, if you have never unmounted a pedal before, it's not that hard, but you have to understand that the threading on these is different than just regular bolts. So when you're taking off a pedal, I always just like to think of bringing your wrench towards the down tube. So no matter which side I'm on, so right now I'm doing lefty loosey on this from the inside. Once I flip that pedal over, I need to do the same thing. So that means it's righty loosey, if you will. So I'm coming this way. They're backwards threaded. And it's actually really simple logic for that. It's because if it weren't, then whichever one, this one, would uh, unscrew while you're pedaling. Now I like to, at this point, just get a tissue in there and clean out any gunk. There's gonna be some gunk in there. <clears throat> Most of this that you're seeing is leftover grease because this is also a point in time when you should grease your pedals. So I travel with my bike pretty pretty frequently, and every single time I travel, of course you have to take your pedals off, that's a great opportunity to re-grease your threads. So uh, I'm cleaning out the old grease that's in there, I'm gonna put some new grease in there, and I'm gonna mount these pedals. Okay, if you remember to the earlier part of this video, I discussed these washers, and the whole purpose of these washers is because on some carbon cranks, you have this, uh, essentially this nut is recessed and the pedals themselves may actually uh, hit the carbon. So what I'm gonna do is very quickly, I'm gonna install this crank or this pedal most of the way, pretty much all the way, just I'm not gonna super tighten in. All right, so I'm gonna put some grease on the axle or on the, uh, on the threads here. You don't need much. You don't want it so much that it's uh, spilling over on the outside. In fact, I probably put a little too much on there. You just want enough that it's gonna create a nice seal, keep the moisture out and keep your threads from locking up. And if you have it in the threads, it will spread the rest of the way once you start putting that on. So I'm gonna thread this on this one to the right. And I'm just gonna make sure that I'm not making contact, that the power pod here is not making contact with the crank arm. 
If I can keep the Q factor the same on this, uh, you know what? That is too close for my comfort. <clears throat> I'm gonna put one washer in and that should be sufficient. And since there's really no way I can get the camera in here to show you what it is that I'm seeing, essentially this power pod right here is going to come in contact with that carbon. And that's no good. We don't want that. So we're going to put one spacer in here. We'll try that first. If I can get away with just one, that'll be ideal. I want to see some gap in there and yep, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna bring the camera around. Maybe you can see this. Maybe you can't. But I want to see that gap in there. And before I had that spacer, I did not have that gap. Now I've got that finger tightened. Uh, I do need to crank it down just a touch. Uh, one mistake I see a lot of people do is they crank their pedals down way too tight. Remember, when you pedal, because of the angle that these are installed, you're basically tightening the pedal anyway. So cranking that bad boy down. Uh, with all of your might, it's kind of a bad idea. When you go to take it off next time, you're going to have a really hard time. And there's nothing worse than just damaging your threads, damaging your crank arm, damaging your top tube, or, or your down tube, or my favorite, is when you're working really hard and you snap and you hit your arm into the chain ring and you have yourself a nice little tattoo in your arm. That sucks. Okay, so I've put some grease on there. Put this washer in place. And... Oh, too far. Gravity's kind of a pain sometimes. We come at it from this direction. And once I get the pedal in there, it won't continue to do that. So again, I'm tightening that way, towards the front of the bike. I just want to make sure visually. Yep, there's no contact with the crank arm. Bust out my trusty. pedal tool. Again, I'm not going to put like tons of weight into that. I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want to damage that bike. But I want it to be nice and firm. So a little bit of force, not a crazy amount. Okay, there we go. The, uh, the pedals are installed. The cleats are installed. Now what I need to do is download the app and uh, connect these pedals to my head unit, do a zero offset, all of which can be done from the app, and I should be good to go. Let me test, let me test that out real quick. All right, well, an interesting revelation here. Um, both of these pedals, their manufacturers will specify their stack height. Um, and I don't know, maybe it's just how they measure things. Maybe things are being measured a little differently. I lowered the seat according to what the stack height should have been. And interestingly enough, after doing a test on that, it felt really low, like ridiculously low. Now, bear in mind, you know, I'm wearing jeans while testing this. Putting a chamois on does make a difference, but not a significant one. Um, it felt really, really low though when I tested this. And sure enough, when I measured it, this platform, the Shimano platform, uh, is measuring almost a full 10 millimeters higher than the Favero platform. So when I measure, normally when you measure seat height, you measure from the center of the bottom bracket to the top of the saddle. Uh, this time I measured from the actual pedal platform to the top of the saddle. And sure enough, the um, the distance here is about 850 millimeters from the Shimano pedal and only about 840 meters, meters, sheesh. Uh, yeah, I don't have that big of an inseam. 850 millimeters from the pedal platform to the top of the saddle. And the Favero is about 840 millimeters, 10 millimeters or a centimeter. That's a lot in bike fitting world. So, uh, I don't know where the discrepancy comes in. I've measured the cleats. The cleats are almost the exact same thickness. Uh, and their engagement points are almost exactly the same. So that's not where that difference is being made up. So I actually need to bring this saddle up um, a little further than it was, not down, which is fine. I mean, I'll just, uh, I'll adjust accordingly. 
Um, again, now that I'm trading pedals and cleat systems and all that stuff, I'm gonna have to redo a, a bike fit. Um, it's not gonna be a huge change. And a lot of this, if you've already gotten a bike fit and you're making this type of change, you can probably make a couple minor tweaks yourself. Just keep it within the few millimeter range. Don't try and do dramatic revolutionary uh, changes. Now, one other quick thing I wanted to point out, uh, just like the Shimano systems, just like the look systems, you can adjust the amount of release tension and clip-in tension, and that's your adjustment screw right there, and this is your setting. This is set on about the middle point. Um, the middle point on this, to me, feels about as loose and easy as the easiest setting on a Shimano. Uh, if you like a really secure clip-in and, and, and clip-out release tension, you might want to tighten that down a bit. Uh, otherwise, it's, yeah, same general mechanism. Uh, and then the only other thought that I have is these cleats have a decent amount of float in them. I don't know the exact amount, but I guess it was probably between six and eight degrees of float. My previous cleats only had two. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, I can tell you right now it feels weird, but you know, I'll, I'll get used to it. I, I've used speed plays where you have 15 degrees of float or uh, um, uh, some other systems, the uh, time espresso systems that have like 15 to 20 degrees of float. Um, these don't feel quite that floaty but they are definitely more floaty than my uh, than my Shimano Blues. So let me uh, redo this and do a little bit more testing. One final note on the installation of these pedals is that um, I really did have to download the uh, Asiomo app, which was pretty easy overall. Uh, I had to connect to the pedals and I had to register the pedals before it would actually communicate with my head unit. Um, I don't know if that's normal. Uh, I'll read the instruction manual and find out, and maybe I'll put something down in the comments. But it wouldn't register cadence or power uh, prior to me installing the app, registering the pedals, and um, doing a zero offset within the app. I tried doing the zero offset from the head unit, which it does do. It does do the zero offset there. But uh, until I had done it all in the app, uh, it wouldn't transmit that information. Don't know if it was just a quirk, but I do know that if you've got these and you've installed them and you're like, why the heck isn't it working? Maybe check that, do the app. It doesn't require uh, like your firstborn child's information or even really an account login. It just wants your, your name and your email address. Uh, and I, you could probably put in a fake email address. In any case, um, took just a couple seconds. It's all here. There's some pretty cool information in the app, uh, including a travel mode, which is awesome if you're gonna be you know, driving your bike to a bike race that's several hours away. Uh, put it in travel mode so you're not burning your battery and it won't uh, won't waste your battery. Just don't forget when you get there to put take travel mode off or you'll be like, why don't I have power? Well, because you got travel mode on. Um, yeah, so that's, that's it. Um, I've dialed in my fit. Um, I don't think I'll really need to do much in the way of like laser adjustment. Everything on my knees seems to be tracking very similarly. I've, I just did a quick measurement. Everything seems to be tracking very similarly, although the Q factor is moved out by about two millimeters. Um, it doesn't seem, and, and that's verified by measuring from the crank arm itself directly to the center of the pedal. Uh, it is about two millimeters out from where it had been. Um, so uh, two millimeter Q factor adjustment, I imagine that over the next week, I will feel that, but uh, my knee seems to be tracking just fine. Maybe that's because of the additional degrees of float not having any issues. Uh, the cleats were relatively easy to trans transfer. Um, as soon as I kind of break the cleats in, I think I'll probably be a little happier uh, or, you know, as soon as I adjust to them. But overall, pretty easy. Um, this entire process, shooting the video, doing the changeover and everything, maybe, maybe took a half an hour. And that's because uh, I, I was taking my sweet time. So uh, really quite easy. If you've done any pedal swaps before, this is that easy. And initial tests side by side are promising, but stay tuned because I'll give you a review. I don't need to do multiple months of riding on these things. They're either accurate or they're not. They're either either good and easy to clip out of, or you know, appropriately uh, easy or challenging to clip out of and clip into. So you know, I can I can have a review on these pretty soon. But uh, my overall take so far, so far positive. We'll see. Time will tell. Okay, so that's it for me today. Uh, again, pardon my disgusting, nasty-looking bike. Uh, it's about to get washed, and um, 
stay tuned. I'll have some reviews for these coming real soon. Thanks. See you guys later.